heard of rescue pets where someone adopts an animal from a shelter and gives them a forever home. But did you know there's also a tremendous need for temporary foster homes for pets? Here to tell us more are Laura Carlock, co-founder of Rescued Pets Movement, and Dave Leonard of Regions Bank, whose family also fosters some of these animals, I understand. So let me ask you both, how did this all begin? Well, Rescued Pets Movement, we're a, a Houston nonprofit, and what we do is we save animals from the city pound and the uh, county pound, uh, rehabilitate them for a couple of weeks, and then transport them to other areas of the nation that have a need for adoptable pets. So it's a supply and demand uh, type of concept. And we learned it, uh, one of our co-founders was in New Mexico several years ago and discovered this transport program from uh, southern New Mexico up into northern New Mexico and into uh, Colorado. And so we brought that to Houston and have implemented it here. Oh, interesting. And since then, you guys have had great success with this program, placing 23,000 thousand pets in homes? 20, 23,000 dogs and cats, three pigs, uh, <laughs> and uh, since uh, we formed in the end, at the end of uh, September 2013. So under four years, we've been able to save that many animals. Just in a few years. Mm -hmm. And Dave, is there a goal? I mean, is the sky the limit when it comes to how many animals whose lives you want to affect? Absolutely. I mean, I think the more that we can help, uh, obviously that's a goal for us, but it's also to get more people to foster so we can help exponentially grow that. Well, so tell me a little bit about your story, because as a foster family, you have pets that temporarily come into your home. Absolutely. And then it becomes a whole family affair, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we started in Memphis. Uh, we just relocated to Houston about two years ago. And our first dog, it was pretty sad. We couldn't get the, uh, the dog out of the shelter for about an hour. And after about two days spending some time with us, he finally got the trust up and was able to come out. And come out of the, he came out of the corner and was able to, you know, I guess, acclimate himself with our family. So um, that was a, that's how we got involved. And then we understood that, that really is kind of what our passion was as a family to really kind of help dogs. And when we moved to Houston, we were able to find RPM organization like this that allows us to continue doing what we really enjoy doing. And then, uh, you know, being able to take care of these dogs. And, and again, the goal is to get them in, rehabilitate them, and, and get them to the next step. I mean, one of the most satisfying things about this organization, I would assume, is when you place an animal in a forever home. But... It still continues. I mean, there are still so many animals. This is like an ending pipeline of animals needing homes. So you really are still in search of foster families, right? Yes, absolutely. There are about approximately 800,000 homeless dogs and cats on our streets here in Houston. And so... I'm sorry, how many? 800,000. They estimate 800,000 to 1.2 million. Wow. And so it's crazy. And there's a lot of areas where the animals are just roaming. And, uh, and so what we uh, do is um, uh, we have just found that by taking this huge supply and moving it up north. But in order to do that, we have to have foster families because it's, that's our backbone of what we do. We don't want them to be put in kennels for a couple of weeks. We want them to be in homes where they can be socialized and rehabilitated and come out of their shell. And so for dogs and cats and kittens and puppies, it's the best way to do it is to put, it, put them in these homes. And we supply all the, the, the uh, supplies needed in order to do that. So there's really no cost. We just need you to provide the love and the home uh, for a short period of time. I love some of those photos uh, we were saying. It's absolutely adorable. Now, Dave, let's say that someone is maybe not in a position to actually take a pet into their home to foster temporarily. What are some of the other ways that people could get involved? Well, I'll defer that to Carla or yeah, Laura. <laughs> I'll defer it to Laura as we say that. Sorry. Uh, she, she can answer yeah. that question probably better than I could. Okay. Well, it's, it's, we call it the Fs. We need foster, we foster families and funds. So uh, donations, we always need donations. We also have other ways you can volunteer. We also like to work with other organizations that work on spaying, neutering, and other types of things in the in the um, in the area. So we have plenty of volunteering to do with us uh, and with these other organizations. Um, but but primarily, it's foster families and funds. So donations can be made to us. Uh, we're a 501c nonprofit, and uh, we 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 operate solely on donations. It's also so interesting. I'm reading here that you guys not only you know find forever homes for these animals. Animals, but you also provide rehabilitation services. And I didn't realize there's such a great need up in Canada. Yeah. It, Explain it, that. Okay. Well, I can tell you, up, up in the north and in Canada, uh, the, the, it's, a, it's um, uh, kind of three things. One is they don't have the year-round breeding season that we have in the south. Up north, it's so it stays colder. Um, here, the animals are permitted to breed because of our, our warm climate the whole year round. Uh, secondly, up in the north and in Colorado, they have had um, space and neuter laws and initiatives in place since the early 1970s. Oh, wow. Whereas here in Houston and in the South, you're not required to spay or neuter your pet. 
And then finally, amazing. yeah, it's and amazing. finally, there's a different attitude towards owning rescue pets up in the north. And up in the north, it's they want you to do that. They they don't want you to go to a breeder. Mm -hmm. Here in, in Texas, we find it's a very uh, you know it's a breeder town, breeder state. People like to go to get their full bred dogs, not realizing that there's tons of in the, them in the shelters. It's so interesting. I mean, and that is such a cultural shift. It sounds that Absolutely. maybe needs to take place, but until it does, you guys are out doing this work. Dave, you were also honored by Regions Bank yes. for the work that you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit yeah, about that? Absolutely. What a great opportunity. So Regions uh, picks one associate or one employee every month to do a Better Life Award, and it's the most prestigious award that we get at Regions Bank, and it encourages associates to go out and, and make life better, better in the communities. And uh, what I was recognized for was, one, that, but also teaming up with an organization like RPM that is making a difference in our communities, whether it's with a, a human being or an animal or cleaning up. Uh, but we're encouraged and recognized to go out and really just make life better. And that was the cool part. And some of these pets, I mean, do you notice a difference right away when you place them in a forever home? Can you tell just by the, the animal's behavior and attitude? Yeah, absolutely. It depends on what the circumstances were. But I do know that, you know, a lot of the pets will, you know, you've got to build up trust with the pets. And eventually they come out of their shell. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's really what gets you hooked is when you see an animal that's either been abused or, or has had issues and they start trusting you. And then you're able to take them to transport to go to the other areas. Uh, that's the rewarding part of this. So it's great. So if people want to learn more about your organization, where do they start? Uh, they could go to uh, rescuedpetsmovement.org. And okay. we also have a great big Facebook presence. If they wanted to look up Rescued Pets Movement on Facebook, we would love them for them to like our page and kind of keep up with what we're doing every day. All right. Well, Laura, Dave, keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you so much for Thank stopping you. by. For having us. And again, to see how you can get involved, just visit rescuedpetsmovement.org. What a great story. Thank you again. Thank you. And we will be right back.